attention to as they're doing their year end reports. So I'll go awesome. ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Whitney, and thanks, Beth, for uh, for having me on. Um, I'm going to uh, let's see share my screen now, and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can get this going. So. Um, Assume we can we can see this here. It looks like it's looking well. So today um, we are going to be talking about Chapter 14 um, in the SIP uh, renewal paperwork here, and really focusing on water and nitrogen use, doing all the calculations and all the little pieces that go into um, filling out um, all that information that's required. It's actually a really simple. Um, but there's some math involved. Um, but now we've got some really great tools that are available to you um, to help you do all those calculations so you don't have to do them on the you know, back of a napkin or whatever. So what we're gonna be looking at today oh, is um, focusing on section 14.2 and 14.3 in, um, in the, uh, the SIP, uh, SIP document. So, let me through here. So section 14.2 is going to be your water use report. And I've got screen grabs and all kinds of other stuff we're going to be looking at. So don't worry about that. Um, another great way to do it is if you have multiple screens, though not all of us do, you can actually log in to, your, um, to the SIP um, app website and get onto your documents and fill them out as we're going along. Or you can just... Uh, watch and take some notes. So we're going to be focusing on the 14.2, which is your water use report. Um, and that is your applied irrigation water, um, your applied frost water, if you have frost protection, as well as documenting uh, rainfall. And then in section 14.3, that's the nitrogen use report. So that's where we're going to be calculating and, and documenting all the, the nitrogen that's going into the system. Now that is nitrogen from fertilizer, nitrogen from compost, if you do apply any compost, as well as nitrogen from water. And this is one that a lot of people uh, forget about is, is that you know if we're on well water, um, there oftentimes is uh, nitrogen present in that well water. And we wanna account for that um, in, our, in our calculations. So this is a quick little screen grab of the uh, first page of uh, the opening page of chapter 14. Um, I remember when it was chapter 11, this goes back a little ways, but now we're at chapter 14. Um, so on, your, uh, on the uh, SIP app website, you have a, um, so let me bring up my, uh, my laser pointer here. So you have um, this opening page here, and this is again, like I said, where we're documenting our year-end water and nitrogen use reports. Um, we're going to look at, uh, this is piece here is where you have your, your ranches, um, your ranch group, and then individual ranch names. Um, and then you're gonna click on submit answers right here. That's gonna take us to where we fill out all the information. One thing that we're going to be looking at as we, we go along here um, is the nitrogen use, water and nitrogen use report workbook that um, was put together and is a very, very helpful resource. And I'm going to be um, you know, sharing that as well as we go along. And I'm also gonna be explaining how to actually make those calculations. So you have the calculator, but I'm gonna show you what the numbers mean and all the numbers in the background mean. It's important to understand them both. So looking at section 14.2, and this is on that app.sipcertified.org web, web page where you're filling out all your documentation. Um, we're going to click on that uh, water use report piece. Um, the general parameters, 14.1, is basically your acreage as well as your yields. Um, but that, and that should usually be filled out already if you've already filled it out before. Um, so we're looking at water use report, um, and we're going to be looking at a number of different um, pieces here. The first piece that we're going to, to need to be calculating is the actual amount of applied irrigation water on the vineyard. In a, in a measurement of acre feet per acre. And that throws people off a lot, um, a lot of times, depending on how you are um, 
you know, calculating or um, recording your irrigation use. Um, sometimes irrigation use, people are recording in gallons, um, total gallons, total acre feet, total inches. But we're wanting to see acre feet per acre. So not for the whole, you know, for your whole vineyard. If you have a 10 acre vineyard and you did 10 acres, um, that's not, you're not going to enter 10, you're going to enter one because it's acre feet per acre. And we're going to go through that here in a second. So do you keep irrigation records? This is, uh, this is something that, um, you know, so not everybody does, but I would certainly encourage you to do, um, for a number of reasons. But what, what we're looking at right here is just a simple, this is an Excel spreadsheet that I had built when I was managing vineyards. Um, and I had, you know, different, different blocks along, along this axis. And then I had the week, um, along this axis. And then basically what I would do is at the end of the week, I would enter the number of hours, um, that I irrigated, um, you know, per week. And then it, it calculated all that. And then I had some, some formulas in there to, to tell me how many, uh, gallons per vine we applied and then how many again, acre feet per acre, um, we were irrigating. So you need to know, um, you know, a, 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 a whole host of information. Um, and, you know, we need to be able to do these calculations to get us to acre feet per acre. So when we're doing these calculations, we, we, we need a, a number of things. Um, so what information do you really need at the end of the day? Um, and that's the amount of irrigation applied. So question number one, do you have a flow meter? If you have a flow meter on, say, your well or your irrigation system, that will give you your answer in, in one fail swoop. If you record the starting number at the beginning of the season and then you go at the end of the season and you record that final number on the flow meter, you will be able to do the math to figure out how many um, acre feet or gallons per acre you've you've applied. So if yes, then here's the formula and I'm going to show the calculator here in a second, but I really want to explain how the, the formulas work first because it's important to understand that. So if you have a um, a water meter and the water meter gives you a number in gallons, so you take that number of gallons, you divide that by the number of acres that you have, and then you divide that by 326,000. Um, and that will tell you exactly how many acre feet per acre you have um, that you have applied. So just uh, what does that 326,000 number mean? There is uh, 326,000 gallons of water in an acre foot. So that's, that math works. So here's an example. If your water meter said that you had applied 500,000 gallons of water on a three acre block, you divide those and then you divide that by 326, you get 0.51 acre feet per acre applied. So half an acre foot of water per acre. That's how that math works. Um, now, if you have, if you do not have a flow meter, we need to do some additional calculations. Um, first off, what do you need? You need your vine and row spacing. You need the number of emitters uh, per vine, those drip emitters. You need to know what the emitter flow is in gallons per hour. And um, if you look here, these are these emitters up here in this picture. These are Netafim uh, woodpecker emitters. These are probably the most common emitters on the market today that you see in, in vineyards. Um, on the top of, of that emitter, you will see a little stamp and it will, it'll probably be because those emitters are made in Israel, um, in liters per hour. So, um, that is, you know, figure a liter is a quart in rough measurement. So say a half gallon per hour emitter will say two liters per hour. So, um, and it'll say two LPH. That's, that's the, you know, the great way to, to understand that. So understanding how much your emitter of flow is, you need to know how many total irrigation hours you have irrigated um, over the course of the season. So hopefully you've been keeping good, good records there. So this is the irrigation calculator 
um, in the workbook. And I'm actually going to let's see, I'm going to bring up the spreadsheet itself and see if I can pull this over. So you can see this is the water and nitrogen use spreadsheet. Um, and so on the bottom, there are a number of different tabs that line up to the different chapter uh, categories. So we had 14.1, which is your general parameters. So you can enter the number of acres that you had. Um, and so let's say for this example, we have 50 acres of vineyard. Um, our yield that year, say, was 200 tons. So it's giving us a four ton per acre calculation. We would enter that into um, into uh, the answer in 14.4. So now let's go to the irrigation tab, which is 14.2.1, and this is the calculator. So this calculator is going to do all the math that I um, I really showed you earlier, and you can you can do a number of different methods um, or fill in a number a number of different variables to calculate. Um, how much water you're using. So, for example, there's actually four different different methods here. Um, so this method is runtime in hours converted to acre feet with flow in gallons. So if you knew that, say, you had applied over the course of the season 360 hours of irrigation, your flow rate per vine is one gallon per hour, and this is fairly common. Typically, we use two half gallon emitters per vine. Um, or if you have a single one gallon emitter or whatnot, you enter the, the total per vine. Um, that's very important. And then you enter your row spacing. In this case, we're doing eight foot by five foot. Um, we enter all those variables and it, it gives us our, our number without having to do all the background all the 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 math calculations that um, that we have. Now there's another way to to check it. Here is in liters. So as I mentioned, um, a lot of emitters are um, stamped in a uh, in liters per hour. You can um, again enter your flow rate per vine. Say it's four liters per hour. There's two half gallon or two two liter emitters per vine, and that gets us to that 1.27. Now. You can also calculate um, gallons per vine to acre feet per acre, um, because let's say you've irrigated, you know, 360 hours over the course of the year, um, and uh, let's do eight by five. Enter that, and again, that gets us 120 acre feet per acre, um, and then gallons per acre feet. Um, no, that's this that that is broken. That's not working. Anyways, um, I usually like to go with with this calculator right here. Um, in the number of hours you've applied, the emitter flow rate in gallons per hour, and then your vine and row spacing. Now, people ask me, well, hey, Paul, I have different row spacing <laughs> in uh, you know across the vineyard. I have some blocks that are eight by five. I have some that are eight by eight head train, and I have some, you know, narrow seven by three. Well, what you need to do is you need to do these calculations for each one of those blocks, and then you you basically add them together, the total number um, in acre feet per acre, and then divide the total number of acres that you have. Um, that's a good way to average because what we're looking for is we're looking for the average amount of irrigation over the entire SIP certified vineyard. Um, so if you have multiple blocks in there, calculate your irrigation amount on a block by block basis. Um, if you have, like I said, multiple row spacing and, and the like in, um, in vineyards, in the vineyards. Um, so there's that. Now I I am uh, just because I'm running multiple screens here. I can't tell if there's going to be if there's any questions. So um, I know you can type in questions in um, in the chat box, uh, but um, if if it, we'll we'll try and capture uh, all those questions at the at the end, um, just to be uh, just to be 
safe. Um, okay, so we have uh, entered all the all the details in in 14.2, and in this case, the the example that I used um, on um, on this uh, on this presentation, we had 400 hours of irrigation, one gallon per hour um, emitter flow rate per vine, 10 by six spacing. That came out to 0.89 acre feet per acre. All right. So that's where we've done our calculations. And then we're going to enter again this 0.89 um, acre feet per acre. Now, another way to do it, um, if we go back, actually, if we go back to my original calculator, sorry about that. Um, no, no. I'm sorry, I I, uh, I was going to say one thing, but the math the uh, the math isn't right. So also, if you get inches per acre, um, sometimes um, flow meters will give you a number in inches per acre, um, and you can obviously do the math there. Divide the inches per acre by 12 to get you to your feet per acre. And so this is where, again, we enter that, that number of acre feet per acre. And then when you want to add files, typically where I add, either I have the spreadsheet or I take, I like to take a, um, you know, save a, a screenshot of the calculator. Um, so a screenshot of say this calculator right here, um, showing your calculation and I like I enter that here into the um, the add files piece um, for the applied irrigation water that way you're documenting um, you know all of your you know your calculations um, and your records so hopefully your you know your irrigator isn't isn't using a you know a, a lined you know notebook or something like that we're getting we're getting we're capturing that information in a digital format like a spreadsheet that we can um, that we can show, um, you know, that we can add to the uh, to the report, and there's a lot of simple ways to do that. All right. Um, now we want to again calculate for frost water. Now, not everybody has frost protection, um, but that is certainly irrigation water applied um, that we need to measure. We do the same calculations. Um, as we did with the drip irrigation, though you need, and so you need with, if we have this, our calculator here, um, we can go to the next session, which is, I'm clicking here on frost water, and, and this is going to tell us, again, you're going to need to calculate gallons per minute, your total runtime in hours, and then it will calculate out your acre feet per Per, um, per acre. Um, so frost protection sprinklers are a little bit different than, than drip irrigation. Um, drip is calculated usually in gallons per hour. Frost protection sprinklers are calculated in gallons per minute. So those are some things that you need to, to again, note and remember. Um, so typically it's a very, you know, again, it's a pretty simple calculation because it's you know frost protection they're sprinklers so they're covering the whole area if you have um micro sprinkler irrigation um you could again um they're still high flow enough that they'll give you a gallons per minute um per acre um indicator so you'll need to you'll need to be able to to get all you know add all that information up um and so so some people, unfortunately, if you don't know how many gallons per minute um, per acre you you have, you'll need to do some initial measurement on your frost protection system. Usually the company that installed it will tell you how many gallons per minute um, per acre it is, but um, sometimes you have to go and actually count how many sprinkler heads you have in an acre um, or in a block and then divide that by the number of acres. Um, and and do a little bit of extra research in there as far as the nozzle size um, and everything that um, to get you to those those um, those gallonages. And if you need help 
With that, um, your local irrigation companies can certainly help, the company that installed it. Um, you know, they can certainly help with uh, identifying the nozzle size and all that and getting you that information. All right, so that's frost control. Um, so in this case, um, for frost water use, do you have frost protection sprinklers? A, if you do, if no, then you just enter, enter zero and, and continue on. Um, if you do have frost control sprinklers, like I mentioned, um, you need the same information as, uh, as your irrigation. How many hours did you run your frost control? What's the flow rate? And then run those calculations. So in this case, we had uh, zero acre feet per acre um, because we did not apply any frost, um, frost water. Now, when you're entering on the, on the SIP certified system, um, on the app, sometimes if you enter a number that, that doesn't fall within um, historical responses or, or what it expects, um, it will pop up this little warning box. Um, so you can see it appears this falls outside of historical responses. Double check your work. So this, and it gives you some information um, on, okay, the average response is 0 0.03 acre feet per acre. If that box comes up, that is, might be a good indicator just to double check your work and make double check your math. And then again, if you had did apply frost um, frost water, you want to put your documentation in there, um, be it a spreadsheet with, okay, I applied eight hours of frost protection on this and this date um, and so forth. Just those are your records. We want to document those. All right, rainfall. Um, again, we want to be able to calculate rainfall. Now, certainly we haven't had a lot of rainfall in the last few years, but we still want to be able to, um, to document that. Um, so typically rainfall is measured in uh, inches um, per acre. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can say, okay, yeah, we got 10 inches of rain this year. Well, that's 10 inches of rain per acre. Uh, basically across the whole acreage. So you, again, you do the math and you divide by 12 and you get 0.89. Oh, that's where my 0.89 came from. Um, so how do you know how much rainfall you've had? Um, well, there's there's a number of different sources available to, to be able to get you to that number. Um, ideally, uh, if you have an on-site rain gauge or a weather station, that will give you your information very, very specific to your exact site. Um, and those of you who, you know, maybe farm on the, you know, the west side of, um, of pa you know, in Paso, um, shoot, rainfall can vary from, you know, a mile to mile, um, depending on, on where you're at. So having, a, you know, some good, good on-site um, measurement devices are, are really the way to go. Just be sure that you document those. Um, this is an example of, um, of uh, ra a rainfall graph from a weather station. Um, and so this, this shows you total, total irrigation from, from basically, you know, from year to, to year. Um, and so in this, in this case, um, there's, looks like 17 and a half inches of rain on this, um, at this weather station. Um, and so boom, there's your number. It automatically calculates for you and you can enter, um, you know, different, uh, you can see this is from, this is an old screenshot. This was from 12-4-2016 to 12-4-2017. It's actually one of my vineyards um, off of one of my rain gauges. But uh, so you can see in that year, you know, 12 month time period, um, we had basically 17 and a half inches of rain. So that's the, that's the number that I would enter. You can certainly use uh, weather service with nearby rain stations. Um, an example is the Pastor Robles Wine Country Alliance weather database that they have, um, you know, with Western weather. Um, you can pull down, um, you know, specific, they have weather stations sprinkled throughout the Pastor Robles AVA, um, and you can download weather data um, and into a, you know, Excel format or what, or whatnot. So if we're gonna look here, um, this is, uh, this is the column for total precipitation in that year space. And so it added up for this weather station in Templeton Gap um, to uh, 21.6 inches, 
total. So that's that's the number that we can go with. And then there's other online sources. And then, I, you know, when in doubt, ask your neighbor. Hopefully your neighbor has a weather station and uh, or has a rain gauge and, um, you know, you can get a number there. So um, in this case, uh, I, you know, we ran the number and um, we uh, we got, I came out with 1.76 acre feet per acre because I divided um my inches by 12 and that gives me the number of acre feet uh acre feet per acre and again so we measured in in that last example 21.17 inches um divide that by 12 that gives us 1.76 um inches per our acre feet per acre and again you want to add your document your file so you can take a a screenshot of the weather report of the weather station report um, download, you know, the spreadsheet or whatnot, but we certainly want to, to again, uh, document uh, that in irrigation. All right, so um, that is all for water use report. So that's going to sum up um, all, all basically three, um, you know, three different um, inputs that we had, which is irrigation, frost, and natural rainfall. And then once you complete that, you pop down to section 14.3, which is the nitrogen use report um, reporting. And again, all of these calculations are on a per acre basis. So we're wanting to get, I would say, you know, we're looking for an average amount per acre um, for the entire the entire vineyard. So again, different, you know, different blocks might have different levels of inputs. We want to calculate those all separately and then add them together and divide by the whole um, for the uh, the whole amount of acreage for that for that vineyard to get us that single number and again um, we have this nitrogen water report um, workbook going to be able to use that and it's going to be a very helpful um, helpful tool to run these calculations all right so um, nitrogen we typically think nitrogen, we're thinking about fertilizer, right? So fertilizer is, is kind of probably going to be the most trickiest calculation that you're going to probably have to do um, in this whole um, reporting um, piece because uh, there's, there's a lot of different nitrogen sources, liquids, dries, um, and the method of calculating the amount of nitrogen that's in there is different depending on if it's a liquid or it's a dry. So we're going to go through all the different calculations and then I'm going to show you the calculator um, where it's going to be able to do all that information for you. So um, what do we need in this, um, you know, for this, this report? Uh, we need the total pounds of nitrogen per acre. And what are those sources? Those sources are going to be fertilizer. Um, and you'll see terms like NPK, that stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Um, nitrogen is the number that we're going to be worried about. Um, you have dry sources of nitrogen and you have liquid sources of nitrogen. And the calculations to calculate the pounds of nitrogen per acre from those sources are different. Then you have compost. If you apply compost, Compost can supply mineral nitrogen to the vineyard, um, to the vines, and so we have to be able to calculate for that as well. And then irrigation water, as I mentioned, um, irrigation water can have nitrates in it, and I'm going to show you the calculations to figure out um, how much, uh, you know, how to quantify the amount of nitrogen that you're applying per acre um, with uh, irrigation water. So let's talk about nitrogen containing fertilizer applications and figuring out how much nitrogen are in those applications. So we're going to go through again, just like we did before, the dry calculations, and then I'm going to show you um, the calculator and uh, how it will save you all kinds of fun time. But it's really important to understand the underlying math, as I mentioned, in these calculations. So let's talk about dry. So for example, you applied 20 pounds of ammonium sulfate per acre. Well, you're like, well, how much nitrogen is there? Well, ammonium sulfate and is on all fertilizer fertilizers, there is this three digit, three digit code here. Um, this is called the NPK 
um, code. And so what that means is, is that this is the percent of the nutrients by weight. Um, and so if we look at 2100, which is ammonium sulfate, 2100 contains 21% nitrogen per pound of fertilizer. So really simple. If we do, if we applied 20, 20 pounds, we multiply that by 0.21, 21%, and we get 4.2 pounds of nitrogen applied per acre. Really simple math, right? Just a little division gives us our, gives us our information. That tells you how many units we often refer to pounds of nitrogen as units of nitrogen. That is not to be confused with any in any way with the analysis. 2100 does not give you any information about the number of units you are applying. It's just the percentage in that fertilizer. So this is uh, an example of the calculator. It's very simple. Um, you enter the number of pounds of fertilizer that you've applied per acre, and you enter the percent nitrogen component in there, and it will automatically calculate out the number of pounds per acre that you've applied. Very, very simple math. It, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty simple. And if I bring that over, well, I'll show you the, we'll look at liquid, liquid first. Um, so that's very simple. So for every nitrogen fertilizer application that you make during the year, and it may be more than once, you need to calculate the amount or the units of nitrogen that you applied per application. You add those all up, and then that's your total number. So let's look at liquids. And now this is where things get a little more difficult because liquid fertilizers have aren't just don't weigh the same. So some of the key concepts are the bulk density of that liquid. So I have a very handy cheat sheet that I use um, with different liquid um, liquid fertilizers that contain nitrogen. You need to understand how many pounds per gallon that liquid um, weighs because different liquids have different densities. So you can see can 17 weighs 12.64 pounds per gallon but ammonium nitrate AN20 only weighs 10.53. So just by looking at the analysis, you would think that there's more nitrogen in a gallon of AN20 than there is in a gallon of CAN17, but because CAN17 weighs more, you're actually wrong. There's a little bit more nitrogen in a gallon of CAN17, even though that number is smaller. You always have to understand that these fertilizers have a different bulk density to them. And so what we do is we convert those gallons to pounds of N. So we have to do one extra step compared to the dry fertilizer calculation. So for example, you applied 10 gallons per acre of CAN 17, okay? Good to know. So CAN 17 has a bulk density of 12.64 pounds per gallon. You Multiply 12.64 times 10 gallons. So you applied 126.4 pounds of fertilizer per acre. So there's your pounds number. And then you multiply that by 0.17, which is the analysis. Remember, that's the percent by weight. And that gets us to 21.5 pounds of N per acre. So that is how you calculate liquids. Now, you might say, hey, Paul, they, you know, we applied, you know, different blends, um, different fertilizer blends per acre. And, and so, you know, we maybe didn't apply just a straight, we call this straight, straight goods here. So your fertilizer supplier is required by law to give you a fertilizer label that, that delineates the analyses along with the bulk density. Um, and so they're required by law to be able to do that. So there are blends out there like triple eight. So you can see here on this bottom one, blend triple eight, 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 eight. Um, so that's a blend of three different fertilizers. Um, it weighs, again, from the label, 10.85 pounds. So we're able to do the analysis. So if you have blends, you should get a fertilizer label um, 
from from your supplier and that will give you all the all the information you need in order to do these calculations um, and again here's the liquid fertilizer calculator component from the um, from that spreadsheet calculator so we applied 10 gallons an acre the amount of nitrogen in the fertilizer is 17 percent we know the weight per gallon of the fertilizer is 12.64 and it spit out our 21.48 ounces all right, so here's the summary for fertilizer inputs on this hypothetical vineyard. We applied 4.2 pounds of nitrogen per acre dry without ammonium sulfate. And then we applied 21.5 pounds per acre of liquid total. That gets us to 25.7 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Um, so you can see this is a summary um, of the, the, um, the spreadsheet that um, that calculator spreadsheet so I did the math here and then it will automatically add all of that up at the bottom and give you um, give you your your total number which you can then enter into the um, fertilizer uh, component here so this is 14.2.1 um, where you enter your fertilizer inputs it has some examples of the math already there um, we did, we used our calculator, um, or we did the math by hand, calculated it out, and so we got, whoop, we got 25.7 pounds of N per acre. And again, we want to document um, all your, um, all your, you know, your, your fertilizer inputs. Um, if you have a, a good, um, a good salesman, or you know, fertilizer fertilizer guy, agronomist, viticulturist. Um, you uh, hopefully they give you a summary at the end of the year of the amount of fertilizers that they've applied, um, and so you can use that um, for your your nitrogen budget um, and your nitrogen use reporting. But having this information is really critical because again, as, as well as, as you probably know, Regional Water Quality Control Board requires us to calculate and document the amount of nitrogen that we are applying all of this information you will be able to um, enter that information from um, you know from this uh, from this app as well because all the calculations are the same everything that they're looking for um, is the same so all the calculators work um, pretty good and you'll be able to, to use these numbers in your um, your reporting to the water quality control board eventually all right, so that's fertilizer input. Now remember, we also have compost. Now the compost one, it's really, there's a whole host of, of different ways to calculate um, pounds of N per ton of compost. <clears throat> and so um, the calculator is very, very handy. So I'm gonna show you the, the, the calculator here. Um, shortly and um, we'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see um, all the uh, you know the the ways the ways to calculate it because compost and organic matter can be can be a little a little tricky so some information that you're going to need um, and this is from you know from the compost supplier um, we're going to need to be able to to understand what the nitrogen content is in percent in that compost so you will usually when you buy um, a load of compost, they will give you a guaranteed analysis of that compost. And in, in, that, um, in that guaranteed analysis will be a uh, nitrogen percentage as well as a weight by volume number. And we'll be, we'll be looking at that in a second because usually compost is delivered in, in two ways, in either yards, so in a volume or in pounds or by ton. So you can either apply, you know, five tons of compost or five yards of compost. Those are two completely different numbers. And so that's very, very important to understand. So we're going to look at that here. So your nitrogen content can vary depending on the source of the compost, especially green waste compost versus say dairy or manure weight based compost. Um, they can weigh, have different weight and they can also have different nitrogen um, nitrogen analyses. Typically, manure-based composts are going to be higher in, going to have more nitrogen in them compared to straight um, green waste sources. Um, 
you're going to need to know again the percent n on the analysis sheet and we're going to estimate how much compost um, nitrogen is going to be released using these um, these calculators here? So this looks really really complicated. This is a screen grab of the compost calculator in that um, in that nitrogen use report um, spreadsheet again that you can pull right off of the uh, the website there. Um, so in this case, we're going to enter our um, percent nitrogen. Um, from the uh, the analysis report that you get from the compost company. So in this case, we're going to do 1.7%. Um, it will also give you a bulk density of pounds by volume. So in this case, we're going to use you know 900 pounds per cubic yard. Um, so that's going to then calculate um, pounds of N um, per. This will give us our our number here. So we're, we've got 1.7% um, nitrogen in our compost, and we're going to use the, the calculation based on tons applied. So in this case, the, the, you know, the, the compost company is saying, okay, we're, we're, you're going to apply five tons per acre, or you applied five tons per acre of compost. Now, here's the, this is the tricky part, and this is where things get a little, um, you know, a little confusing. Because in that 1.7% um, nitrogen that's in that compost, 100% of that is not available. That nitrogen, organic nitrogen sources, need time to break down in the soil and release. And so a rule of thumb kind of in the industry is um, I, I consider like 20, 20, 20, um, 20. So 20% 20 of the nitrogen that you that that um, that's in that compost is available to the vines in year one. Um, some research shows 17%, 16%, 15. Um, some show 30. Um, I like to kind of cut things down and and just go in that middle number of 20%. So when you see this estimated percent of total N available in year one that I use 20% in my estimations. And, and over the years, it seems to, um, that number is a, is, a, is a pretty good number um, to get us an estimate. Because again, when we, we're dealing with organic fertilizer sources or organic nutrient sources, there are the release of the nitrogen is highly variable compared to chemical sources like nitrate fertilizer sources because those are already in a form that the plants can take up. Organic sources need to break down in soil microbes and things like that. So a lot of things, you know, soil texture, temperature, all kinds of things can, can affect um, the rate at which um, nitrogen is released from those organic sources. So we like to use that 20% total. So in this case, with that 1.7% total nitrogen, um, we applied, we are estimating that 20% of that nitrogen is available. We've got five tons applied per acre. So that's going to give us a, an, a total amount of 34 pounds of N per acre. Um, that's how that calculator is going to work. So if you look at all the, the, the um, you know, the formulas here, the calculator does takes care of all those formulas for you. So we're going to enter 34 pounds of N because we're estimating we applied five tons of N per acre. Um, we're going to, that's the number that we're going to enter in that 14.3.2. As you can see right at the bottom, that's where we, that's where we enter um, it on the SIP app. And again, um, I didn't have room to fit it here, but uh, you want to enter your calculations and also the analysis of the compost. Um, into the documentation, just so you have that you have that saved there. All right. Finally, um, water. Now, as I mentioned, it's important to understand water in an irrigated agriculture. Water is the um, is the largest input um, of any input that we make into irrigated agriculture, um, and that is certainly true um, in irrigated wine grapes. Now, if you dry farm. Obviously, you don't need to do this. You will enter zero because you do not apply any irrigation water. But if you do irrigate, which most of us do, 
you need um, a water analysis, um, a chemical analysis of your water. Um, again, because Regional Water Quality Control Board requirements, we typically do this every year. You get a number, a report every year. And that report, and I'm gonna show you an example here in a second, that report shows a whole host of different, um, different numbers um, from things like pH to bicarbonates to hardness, um, but there's also a nitrogen number. Now, in soil and water reports, there are two numbers that you can get for nitrogen. They can be NO3, so that's nitrate. So they can be re reported in parts per million of NO3, or they can re be reported in parts per million of what's called nitrate nitrogen, so NO3-N. Very important to know which one you are dealing with because there is a different, um, a different converter per, um, for each um, for each uh, um, you know for each number that that you're getting. Um, and so this is you know we go through and do the math. I'm going to show you a water report here. So you certainly what do you need? You need a water sample number one. You typically want to pull that <laughs> from your uh, uh, if you have a single well on site. Um, take it from that well. If you have multiple wells. You need to take a sample from each well, and then, um, you know, probably what I would do is if you if you if you irrigate, you know, equally from from each well, um, then you can add those two numbers together and then average it out and and get yourself um, get yourself a number. So yeah, do you have multiple wells? Do you do all the wells go into a holding tank? Um, you know this. You know so if if multiple wells go into storage tanks then you wanna pull your sample from those storage tanks because that'll give you the blended number. If not, pull them from, from, from the well, um, the wells itself. And most well setups like this um, will have test ports, so little ball valves. Um, there's one right here, you can see um, valves where you can, you can open up the valve and pull a sample. So your report will give you nitrogen and parts per million. Um, and then you will also need to know your total irrigation amount for the year. Um, and that's, we've already done that work from section 14.2-1. So here's an example of a um, irrigation water report. Um, and so um, a couple of things, again, different labs can give their reports in, um, in, in uh, unfortunately different units. Um, so we were looking for parts per million um, but this lab gives um, it in milli equivalent or milligrams per liter. That's the same thing. They just use the metric system, but parts per million is equal to milligrams per liter. So it's the same number. So if we look here, we see that um, the report gives us our nitrogen number in nitrate nitrogen or NO3-N, and we get 2.6 parts per million. So using the conversion factor for nitrate nitrogen, which is 2.74, we multiply 2.6 by 2.74, and that gives us the amount of nitrogen, um, pounds of nitrogen per acre foot. So this is the example, as I mentioned, um, our, our water report shows 2.6 parts per million. Um, we multiply that by uh, 2.74 to get 7.1 pounds of N per acre foot. We applied 0.89 acre feet per acre. So we get a total uh, input from the irrigation of 6.3 pounds of N per acre. Now I'm gonna show you um, the calculator. So here you can see the calculator. Um, so depending on the method by which um, the water report gives you your your number. So if it's NO3, um, you enter that number in parts per million and it will spit out pounds of N per acre. Or as I mentioned, if we look at the NO3N met, um, method, if the report gives us it in that method, we apply that number and it will give us the amount, it'll automatically calculate that amount for us. Um, okay. And so you'll enter that. Again, you want to document 
um, your calculations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take a screen grab of um, the calculator. You can pop it in here, and then you enter your NO3N. Um, this is where you drag in your uh, your water sample report in that um, in that location. And that's the information that you want. And then once we've done that, um, you go to section section 14.4. That gives you your your total summary. Now, um, because I was on a demo account, I, I couldn't it, it wouldn't save them all. But this is where all of your base values that you've entered over the course of all of chapter 14 come up as a summary. And this is kind of our final look where we look at our you know, total acres, total yield. Um, and then we look at our applied irrigation water, frost water, rainfall. That adds it all up to give us a total amount of water in acre feet per acre. It will calculate, it'll do a, a water efficiency, give us a water efficiency number based on tons. Um, of heart of yield, and then we have our nitrogen use report, which um, you know shows and summarizes our fertilizer inputs, our compost inputs, our water inputs, combines them all together, and then gives us an efficiency number in pounds of N per ton of grapes. Um, once you've completed that, you click on the return to ranch groups, and you have completed section 14.4. So that concludes, and this has been about 55 minutes. So that concludes um, our little little talk here. Um, I'm going to um, stop sharing, and I think this will be, um, I think, a good time to be able to ask and and answer um, any questions um, from from the group. All right, I don't see any open questions in the question and answer chat box. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, that's that's good. Hopefully, I guess that means I just explained it so well that uh, you know that uh, everybody <laughs> everybody understands it. But um, let's see. So, I, well, actually, is there? Yeah, I don't see I don't see any um, any chats at all. So. Um, if if not, uh, I am obviously always available um, and happy to answer um, any specific questions that people might have as they're going through this process. Um, I know there's a lot of numbers involved and a lot of math and, and things of that nature. Um, so, um, you know, if if uh, as you're filling this out, remember the deadline is the 15th of this month as you're filling this out. Um, oh, Chris Payne is saying that chat is disabled. Oh, no. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for for um, for saying that. Um, there is a couple of uh, Q&A is the, the Q&A little section is is open. Um, but, you know, really, if, if you um, if you have any questions about, you know, the math um, or Hey, I have this. Um, I got this blend of fertilizer, and I don't know where to find, you know, the bulk density of it. Um, you know, it's it's uh, the the math is really simple. It's just collecting all that information and and making you know making sure that you have everything documented at the at the end of the day. So, um, yeah. With that, if there if there you know aren't any questions, I think we're you know we're good and uh i think you know they're recording this so this will go up and and we will uh we'll have uh it available um to follow up with um on the website correct yes perfect well i wish everybody good luck in filling out their forms it's very fun um i will tell you i've been involved with the vineyard team since it was the positive point system um, and everything was paper in binders. Um, Beth certainly remembers that. The, the app now of filling out all the information and, and all the resources available are amazing. Um, and they make filling out all that information really, really easy, uh, easy now. It's, it's a very, I would say it's a much 
more painless process than it than it used to be. But the important thing is, I think, is is keeping good records throughout the year um, in what you're doing and where you're applying and things like that. And, and there's a lot of technology available now that that can help, um, you know, keep those keep those records straight. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. I think that pretty much wraps it up then. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Whitney and uh, and Beth for having having me on. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you, Paul. Always helpful. <laughs>